So this tutorial is going to be covering functions. There's going to be some basic and some advanced um, concepts inside this tutorial. So to start with, um, I'll go through why we actually use them. So functions are a method of modulating your code and making sure that you have every um, every part of your code that runs a specific has a specific objective is in one function, right? Um, the more uh, like sub objectives you have inside of that, you can create more functions for that. But you want them to be meaningful and you want them to achieve their purpose, right? So say I have function number one. It's not very it's not a very meaningful name, but say I have function number one. I want this function to um, loop and then print out um, when two numbers have uh, when a number has gone past a hundred, right? If I wanted to also um, do something else, so say after that I wanted to do something else, so after that I also wanted to um, print out a picture of a ball, I'd do that in a different function. I wouldn't put that into the same function. You have to make sure that your functions are specific to what they're trying to achieve, right? So if you have a, in the main here, this is a function as well, if I wanted to have a number of different things going on in here, I'd pop them out into different functions. Okay, so it's important to understand that functions are a good way of making sure that your program remains modulated and it also remains readable because it's easier to tell what each part of the code is doing and it makes it maintainable. Um, you'll find that when you're programming, if you don't have different functions and modulation in your code, you're going to end up with a lot of difficulties when you have to maintain your code and either change stuff around or fix stuff, right? So by creating functions, you really take away that issue. Um, the way functions are structured is that you have the uh, accessibility. So if it's either public or private or protected or something like that. So if I wanted to do public, that means that this function can be accessed from any other class that might have a reference to this class, right? If I wanted to make it public static, oops, public static, that means that any class can call this without needing a reference to my class, because this is a static function, right? So um, static functions, you kind of want to, if you're doing anything, anything that's um, repetitive and doesn't have any changing values. So say um, you wanted to, get the current distance from these two parameters inside of it. So say I wanted to um, get distance between A and B. Um, I give it A and B and it does the same thing every time to A and B. No matter what I give it, it's always the same functions that are or the same um, things that are being applied to A and B. But it's when you have to um, do something different in the same function, that's when you run into the issue of you can't use static. You have to have it as a instance base because it's using things that are different. So we'll go through that later. But for now, just remember that a function has to have um, whatever parameters you say the function needs, you have to give it. If you don't give it to them, then it's going to throw a compilation error and it won't, it won't work. So you can take in, um, you can take in anything. So you could take in an object as a parameter, you could take in any of the primitive types. Um, I don't think there's a limit on what you can take in. I haven't tried it out, but because the because the program should be modular, you shouldn't be taking more than um, three parameters anyway, because there should be other functions that can handle that. If you if you're taking in that much, you should be asking yourself, why am I taking in that much, and what is it? What all needs to be done with it? Is there a way that I can split it up into different functions? Something like that, because otherwise you'll run into maintainability issues and, and all those kind of things. So to call a function, you just have to have the function name and the parameters you need to give into it. So in the main, I'm calling the function number one and I'm giving it my int, which is this that I've created here, and I'm also giving it the number three. So now this function has created these two integers. So int x and int y now exist within this function. They haven't been declared here, but they exist. So if I wanted to do, for instance, in this loop, I do x plus y, they already exist because they were given to us by wherever we started this function from. Okay? So, 
Um, we'll go through something else quickly. So a void here, void means that um, the return type, so at the end of every function, it has to return something. So um, what was the outcome of this function, right? So if I wanted to return a string, I'd make sure that I replace the word void with string. So at the end of this, I have to say return um, just I'll explain that in a second. So return z, but z is an integer, so I have to make sure that it's a string by creating a string and then adding an integer onto it to put the integer into the string. Um, that's the shortcut way of making a string out of an integer. Um, so yeah, so that because it's returning a string, I need to make it return a string. Okay, if you don't make it return a string, then you'll get a compilation error. But if I make it void here, I can't make it return anything. Because void means that it returns nothing. This function does not return anything, it runs and that's it. So the only times that you'd want to um, use a void is if the thing you're doing is running a task that will always be the same. So say I'm, um, for instance, I'm well, saving, saving game stats. I know that it's always going to do the same thing every time. I don't need it to return anything. All I need is just to run the function to save stats and that'll be good. Right, so that's why sometimes you use void, sometimes you have other return types. Um, the return types as well could be any number of things, so you could even do like array list um, of, let's say, class objects. It can return that type, as long as you make it return it properly. Um, we'll run into this later, but for now all you need to know is that. 